they're crossed, right? They're absolutely crossed. And considering we're still underneath the 200-day moving average, then and only then this becomes kind of a problem. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Apologies, there was no video yesterday. Uh, monster moves yesterday, big breakouts all over the place. Tesla, this one, that one. Uh, my son had a, a last minute training, basketball training session that uh, we wanted to get him into, so I apologize. Uh, no video yesterday, but let's talk about uh, the tape. I mean, if you've been watching the market, participating in the market, whatever the case may be, uh, for the last five, six days, you, you know how strong the market has been. Uh, it, it's almost felt like uh, euphoric moves, especially yesterday, uh, this ridiculous, ridiculous breakout on Tesla uh, that had this majestic move, took out this whole range yesterday, closed at highs, uh, had some, you know, had some comments from Elon Musk uh, after the close, was absolutely not phased. This morning exploded up another 30, 40 handles. I mean, just everything went absolutely nuts. And then when you look at exactly what happened, uh, the market finally realized, oh, wait a minute, we had this way too big of a run and they finally hit some daily supplies. You can see here this little uh, tainted little, uh, little line, but it hit some sort of supply and then finally got hit. And again, it doesn't really, uh, it, it, it's too early to turn around and say, well, what, what was that the top, right? Was that the euphoric top, the blow off top? Or is this just a kind of a pregnant pause until we start reclaiming the 200 day moving average, it's too early to tell, right? It's definitely too early to tell. But if you look at uh, everything that happened in the last you know, five, six days, all of this, as impressive as it was, was still below the 200 day moving average. And that's kind of a big deal, right? If they reclaimed the 200 day moving average rested and continued on, would be a clear sign that this previous low here was the bottom, was this kind of V, you know, V recovery, but we didn't get that, right? And again, like I said a couple of seconds ago, it's a little too early, too premature to tell, was this this kind of blow off top today on a lot of these names, or was this just a very well-deserved rest? And that's kind of what we're not going to know until tomorrow's session, because again, as long as the bulls continue to kind of grind and protect and defend every dip into the five-day moving average, I think we're fine, right? I think the benefit of the doubt is definitely on the table. The problem starts to lie if we start closing below the 50-day moving average and the five-day moving average that right now, if you look at the chart, they're crossed, right? They're absolutely crossed. And considering we're still underneath the 200-day moving average, then and only then this becomes kind of a problem if you bought stock anywhere in the last two, three days, right? But, but again, we, we don't want to speculate. We don't want to guess. Um, the one thing that going into tomorrow's session, like I, I don't want to use the word I'm um, sell bias for tomorrow because that's not kind of the that's not kind of the the the, the narrative I want to run with this evening. But I, I but I don't think I'm buy bias. I think that's the best way of saying. It. If I see something for tomorrow's session that kind of you know we had a, an alert set for, it's coming out of the bottom channel. For for example, like a Baidu, right? Like a, Baidu is probably one of the nicer names I see tomorrow for the upside, but the majority of names don't look this tight. The majority of names, well, look like this, right? Look like this, right? Look like this, look like, you know, look like this, right? These, these majestic big monster moves that investors and traders uh, did a great job for the last four or five days uh, taking advantage of really big premium setups and going into tomorrow's session, like I said, I, I, I think the bulls, at least from, from the, initial, the initial synopsis, I, I, I think the bulls need a good solid rest. Now, does that mean the market is sell everything, we're back to sell bias mode? No, I, I don't think we're there. Again, we'll, we'll, the narrative will definitely change if we close below the 50 day moving average. But going into tomorrow, you know, I, I think there's some there's some opportunities that we could take advantage on the downside, right? Um, I'd like to see what happens tomorrow early on the any first initial sell off. Do the bulls defend it, 
or do we get a 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock candle that's going to come and confirm those prices and we're gonna start going lower. So it's, it's not more of kind of a deemed sell bias tomorrow. I just don't think I'm gonna buy anything tomorrow, right? Just, just because how uh, overextended a lot of the names are. And if you believe in technical analysis, you can see here, we got stuffed twice right at the same supply zone on the queues. And if you start looking at chart one after another, they kind of reflect the same thing. Tesla, right? Same thing, inverted hammer. You got Amazon, right? You got Amazon rejected off supply, just like uh, the queues did. Apple had a really great, I mean, really, really fantastic, what, six, seven day run. Again, rejected off the top of supply, put in an inverted hammer. And you can see a lot of these names, right? Microsoft did exactly the same thing. Uh, and you look at Square, right? You look at Square, just basically, actually I like Square tomorrow on the downside. <laughs> Now that I'm looking at one of this chart, like, yeah, again, like here's a perfect example. You see how, and this is my focus going into tomorrow. Anything that is uh, sitting on its five-day moving average, you see how Square is sitting on the five-day moving average? If Square starts losing the five-day moving average, nobody's talking about the stocks going back to the lows, but there's a trade there, right? There's definitely a trade there, right? You see this two, You see this channel here, the five-day? If it starts confirming the five-day, you know, maybe you could get six, seven, eight points. Again, at the end of the day, the market needs to rest, right? Whether it rests tomorrow, uh, kind of a very surgical, well-deserved rest, or getting violent back because it had a big run, you could call it what you want. But but it, it, as far as value goes, as far as kind of what my game, at least initial game plan goes, I definitely want to keep an eye on the bulls to see what they do after the initial first pull of the futures. Whether that comes or not is, is a different story. But again, I will, I will not hesitate uh, to see something uh, coming out of a range back to the upside uh, for a trade there as well. But just my concentration is kind of what we're seeing here, right? Like look, look at NVIDIA, excuse me, look at Square, look at NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA lost its five-day moving average tomorrow, right, today. You know, stuff like that. Even even Tesla, right? Even a name like Tesla that it, it, it had a huge run, right? Stopped that supply. You can see the 60-minute supply, right? This is where you're supposed to be buying, selling stock, not buying it. So if it starts losing this whole channel here, you know, why can't this thing go back to its breakout price, right? It broke out yesterday above this 950 level. Why can't this thing, if it, you know, if it's just, just a calm rest back test, why can't it go back to its five day moving average and revisiting where it broke out yesterday, right? It's very, it's very, you know, it's very conceivable. Again, stocks don't go straight up, and especially if they don't straight up, go straight up after seven massive sessions uh, to the upside. So, you know, I, I, again, I, I don't want to call tomorrow session sell bias. I just think I don't want to. I really don't want to buy anything tomorrow either. Uh, I will. I definitely will look at some uh, potential opportunities back to the downside. But the the one the, the most important part where I'm watching tomorrow is any stock, basically like a square. You know, any stock uh, that stopped twice back to back days on its five day moving average. And if it reclaims, if the bull, if the bears reclaim the five day moving average, I mean, look how much room it has uh, back to uh, you know back to kind of a back test uh, action coming up. So there's definitely some value uh, going on. Other than that, man, the market has been, uh, you know, dare to say it, it's on fire, right? It's, it's, it's been on fire uh, for the last six, seven days. Yesterday, uh, yesterday and this morning, man, it felt like, you know, after Tesla broke out above that 950 level, man, they were coming for the, t you know, the thousands, the thousand tens, the thousand fifties. And all of a sudden this morning, they forgot about the thousands, thousand fifties, they were coming for the 11, 11 and a quarter, 1150, you know, Friday expiration. So things got really, really euphoric. Uh, but like I mentioned this morning, right, this is before the market, you know, the market even began. I said, listen, bulls enjoying a heck of a run. You know, remember, stocks don't go straight up. That's the that's the most important part. Gravity is real, right? Uh, that doesn't mean they're shorts. And that's kind of the whole point of what we're talking about tonight. They're not shorts. They're just kind of tired, right? They just need a well-deserved rest kind of put your feet up, relax, gain your, you know, gain your breath, gain your momentum, and we'll see what happens on tomorrow's close. But that's kind of the point. Uh, we could be looking at a more quieter session that didn't turn out that way, right? It did, definitely did not turn out the way. There was very aggressive violence back to the upside, then slowly but surely everything kind of gassed out. And this is kind of the, the, the reminder of what we talked about uh, at Morning Strategy, that things got uh, tired. That was basically it, they just got tired. So let's talk about this. 
Um, let's talk about today's session. Uh, PAGs. PAGs, uh, again, this wasn't for me. I laughed about it, but the last laugh was on me. I didn't take this one. I know a lot of you guys did. Uh, PAGs reported earnings. I was like, well, I don't want to sit with this thing, you know, trade this thing for, you know, fight with this thing for 30 cents. Didn't quite work out that way. Uh, PAGs reported earnings, uh, 1890, 19 uh, needs to build. Here was PAGs. Oops, here was PAGs, P-A-G-S. Uh, it took out, I think we even talked about PAGs last night in the video. It could be, I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, a couple of days ago in the video. But anyway, uh, so yeah, so it took out the 18, 90, 19, started building and went all the way up to nine, uh, $21. Hell, if I knew that was going to happen. But anyway, congratulations for all you guys who took that. Uh, crowd, really great breakout yesterday. There was a lot of big moves yesterday. Crowd, uh, two, two, 210 needs to build. That was yesterday. Uh, monster move yesterday, 220 now needs to build. Uh, here was crowd. It took out, so it took out the 210 yesterday, right? Took out the 210, took out the 220 and traded right to uh, 224 before everything re reversed. Really nice move there on crowd for the last couple of days. Uh, Beyond went up like a buck, buck and change. I basically told everybody to take it off, take it off their focus list. They're the, kind of a weak PR. Uh, Microsoft never got to the 305 level. Uh, and here's where things started, you know, getting a little bit, you know, aggressive back to the downside. NVIDIA experienced traders only. Uh, 260, 60, if it builds below, can flush. Here was NVIDIA. It flushed all the way down. Uh, pretty much closed at the lows of the day around this 256 level. Uh, if it confirms, you know, this thing could, you know, maybe has another six, seven points uh, to the downside, right? So definitely keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow's continuation, but nice push uh, today. This was definitely the, 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 you know, definitely the biggest move, um, at least in my book. I know a lot of you guys feel the same way. Uh, 948, 950 is a massive daily channel. They're coming for the thousand weeklies. That was yesterday. Stock went as high as to 997 yesterday. And then this morning was the continuation pivot, 998,000. Obviously, will be a huge area going forward, needs to confirm. Tesla went to uh, 1040 today. Just an absolute monster, monster move uh, for Tesla. You know, take on the way up, blah, blah, blah. Here comes NVIDIA, 257 on deck, went to 255. Uh, 1020 supply, when it ripped through the 1020s, went to 1040. Uh, but big move there. Here comes PAGS, uh, traded all the way to 21. Crowd, nice pop on crowd. Uh, here, you know, here's the supply, 222 and a half, 24 is supply, right? And then tra traded right to uh, 224 and that's it. I mean, that's it. I mean, really, really, you know, really good market, right? You got really good market, uh, but now it needs a well-deserved rest, right? Like a, like a hero uh, returning from fighting that battle and saving the damsel in distress. Now it's just all about uh, getting a cup of coffee, put your feet up, get your favorite beverage, Right, maybe get a maybe get a little bit of a piece of cake. Right, savor. Right, savor the moment. But for tomorrow, again, I don't want to use the word sell bias, but I definitely I am leaning for some uh, value plays back uh, to the downside just to see where the market closes tomorrow. And if the cues, and this is a very very big area, if the cues, guys, because tomorrow night I usually don't put out a video. It's my night off. But if the cues close below. 350 tomorrow. You see this whole area, right? That's the that's the cross between the rising five and the 50-day moving average. So if the bears start reclaiming back down the 50-day moving average and close below 350, then for tomorrow going into Friday, we're gonna have a completely different conversation about what happens next to the market. Guys, God bless, stay safe, and I will see you all tomorrow.